That's all I get to speak. That's horrible. Yeah, I'm always on. That's my problem. Um, hi, everyone, again. Let's try this again. Hello, everyone. My name is Jason Scott. I run a site called textfiles.com. made a documentary called Bulletin Board Systems, the documentary. <clears throat> I run a variety of sites which are basically involved in the collection of online history. Uh, as a result, I'm somebody who has a very strong relationship with uh, information, the collecting of information, and therefore the collecting of truth, of fact, of history, and in some small amount, uh, collaboration and working together towards a goal. So, uh, the name of this speech is called The Great Failure of Wikipedia. Part of that is branding, because that sounds really exciting. Uh, but part of it is also really true. Uh, I first became aware of Wikipedia about a mm, year and a half uh, ago, maybe about a year and a half, two years now, uh, where I had heard uh, what a lot of people hear when they hear about Wikipedia. They hear about the idea that it is this online encyclopedia that anybody can edit and that there's this software that allows people to collaborate, provide uh, information, truth that they find, or history or facts that they find, and together, working together, this large group of people are able to create a superior learning and reference tool that, because of its free license, will allow people to share it universally uh, without limit up to uh, the infinite future to the point where, as Mr. Wales puts it, it is the availability of the sum of human knowledge to everyone on Earth for free. Um, now, these are extremely lofty goals and so when one goes to it, one kind of goes on to Wikipedia, finds first of all this ugly color scheme, and then they find that there's this interesting amount of information, in fact, a massive information. The further they click, the more information they find until they're amazed at just the pure mass of knowledge that seems to be possessed here about the most minor of subjects and the most major of subjects. All of it seemingly pretty well edited, pretty well put together, where it isn't. It looks like there could be some rules that come by. And so for many people, when they go to Wikipedia, they might come with a pet subject and say, wow, this is an amazing success. I wish to know who the king of Spain is, and then I can find that out here. Here is the king of Spain's name. Fine. Oh, and it turns out Spain exports this crap a lot. Let's find out more about that crap. And four hours later, they come away and say, wow, Wikipedia is a great experience. I do not dispute that. I do not dispute that Wikipedia, for a person who is playing the part of a tourist, a web browser, uh, is a beautiful success. It provides you with a large amount of information, most of it seeming to be relatively accurate, and for the purposes of the fact that you didn't know how much of something there was, or what the name of something was, or what something stood for, you get that reference pretty quickly. Uh, the problem is that once you start to... and, 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 and I, again, completely buy into the Britannica article that said that if this site was called Jimbo's Big Bag of Trivia, it would have been a, a fine success and nobody would have had any problem with it. But the problem is, is that Jimbo Wales, when he put together this mission statement of Wikipedia and the Wikimedia Foundation, he, again, painted it as the sum of all human knowledge presented universally for free. Um, in fact, Mr. Wales tends to be for me, most of the source of a lot of criticism of Wikipedia, simply because of two reasons. Number one, along the process of putting together Wikipedia, he has put together an excellent vision, but in doing so, while he's given over some uh, responsibility to the Wikimedia Foundation and other parts, he has maintained control of Wikipedia. So his statements are still considered to be Wikipedia's statements. Uh, this is actually at odds with a lot of the mission statements. So, for instance, when he goes on to CNN and says, we make the internet not suck, he is speaking for Wikipedia. So this puts them in an interesting position. Uh, when I started out with Wikipedia, I started out actually editing the uh, Xanadu film entry 
because it was a minor interesting thing and put in some facts and so on. I dealt with Wikipedia as a lot of people uh, who take a more than uh, slight interest in it do, which is that you go into Wikipedia and begin to edit it and begin to make minor changes. Now, this brings up an interesting idea, which I've tried to push, which is that unknowingly, and these kind of things happen, unknowingly Wikipedia happened upon a form of human addiction. That is to say, it turns out that if you give people a stage and you give them a stage where they have total control, even if it's for a short amount, they will not rest uh, until they can do it again. In other words, like if you say to somebody, well, you know, if, if, if you go and you edit this entry on Jimmy Carter, for however long it is in there, you are the authority on Jimmy Carter and everyone will know it. This is a completely addictive process. It's what keeps a lot of people going to Wikipedia as a editing faction because when they use it, they end up saying, wow, I've done it. I've done it. I, I've, I've changed the world. And to some extent, they're correct. Because of Wikipedia's uh, freedom, and again, this calls into a criticism. Uh, when I talk about Wikipedia in a non-positive fashion, uh, I receive a number of criticisms, which are very normal. Now, there is an entire faction of people who says, who gives a shit? It's Wikipedia. And that's fine. And then there's a group of people who say, well, you know, Wikipedia is really important and you just don't know it yet. Now, I always say you cannot aggrandize and self-depreciate at the same time. You can't say, I'm really good, but actually I'm kind of an asshole. <laughs> if you do that, what ends up happening is that you get to choose what, you know, you get to put on the asshole or aggrandizement cap based on the criticism that you receive that day. So, in doing so, I'm going to assume that Wikipedia is holding to the credo that it put together. That is to say that it is aiming to be the sum of human knowledge, that it continues to compare itself against reference materials. Um, so, the first criticism is, well, if it's on Wikipedia, you shouldn't believe in it. Now, this is what I call the uh, illegitimate child theory. Uh, you know, people say, well, you know, you shouldn't have unprotected sex. You should not have, you know, uh, 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 sex in a way that you do not regret the outcome. That's fantastic. That would explain all the illegitimate children that occur every year. You know, you can say how people should be, and then you can see how people are. With Wikipedia, because it provides this easy bit of information for people, they can go and get the basis, basic knowledge of something. They can turn away from that and say, that's it. That's all I need to know. If, if it's wrong, it's wrong. And because of Wikipedia's high page rank, and because of the fact that it can generate a lot of text, it has now become a target for spammers. And initially, Wikipedia has been able to handle this pretty well. Uh, one of the side effects of Wikipedia's massive, and this is a benefit of Wikipedia's massive interest, is that it gets a lot of fuck nuts. Now, because of that, it's able to fight against the spammers. Now, to avoid that for the moment, what a lot of spamming places now do is they pull Wikipedia text, which is uh, licensed under the GFDL, and they proceed to put it on their own sites and call it webanswers.whatever, and they fill it up with text ads. Now, this is interesting because what ends up happening is, for instance, let's say Carmine DeSapio. We're unfortunately going to have to go through a lot of trivia here. Carmine DeSapio was the last uh, head of Tammany Hall, which was the uh, political grip machine that controlled New York City for 100 years. He was the only non-Irish head. Uh, he was it until, I think, in mid-1950s, mid and then he basically uh, got into a lot of trouble, and that was the end of Tammany Hall. Now, almost all the information on Carmine de Sapio is from Wikipedia. If you go and type this man's name in, you'll get 100 matches. All of them are variations of the Wikipedia article. The Wikipedia article was typed in by a retiree from Iowa off of the New York Times obituary from Carmine DeSapio's death, which happens to be locked down under registration so it doesn't get out as much. He transcribed it wrong. In doing so, he got the name of his daughter wrong, he got his age wrong, and he got a number of other important facts wrong, all of which are duplicated now throughout the web. Now. Who gives a shit? It's Carmine DeSapio. He's the last guy of Tammany Hall. I get it. We're done. And that's the problem, is you have to say, well, which one are you going to do? Self-aggrandize? You're going to criticize. And I'm going to go with criticizing because, again, when you say some of human knowledge. Now, let's go back into Wikipedia itself. Uh, it's pretty easy. One of the things that Wikipedia has uh, going for it, which I consider one of its great successes, is the fact that it has this general philosophy of opening up to the world and saying to the world, hey, you know, come on in and edit. Now, keep in mind that in 2006, that's a bit of a lie. And again, that's an interesting 
thing to point out. What Wikipedia, and this is the function of this speech, is not to criticize Wikipedia, but to point out how Wikipedia represents the first wave of a coming information war and something where the internet, as it becomes more important as a source of information, is going to be headed off by certain forces, by certain techniques, some of which are successful and some of which are not. And that because Wikipedia has let itself be open to this, we are seeing these techniques in use today, where in 10 years they will actually affect lives directly. In 20 years they will be vital to lives. Wikipedia, because of its high page rank, becomes the source material. And it has a large amount of people who want to do things for it, a large amount of people who want to control it, and a large amount of people who want to wreck it. Now, wrecking it is variant. Um, one of the ways people point to the success of Wikipedia, and this is what drives me nuts in these articles that compare it in Nature and other writing, is that people say, well, I went in and I made a stupid error. You know, I went in and I said that, you know, uh, 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 George Bush has a purple nose, and it was changed within 30 seconds. Wikipedia is a success. Now keep in mind, the George W. Bush article spends less than 20% of its time unvandalized. On a given day, over 80% of the day of the George Bush article is spent vandalized. And the answer is, how is that handled? How are they able to do that? And the answer is, is that because of this constant onslaught of vandalism, which we find generally comes from high school students. High school students, Singapore, and um, college students, in that order, is because um, there are a wide variety of bots, scripts, assistant programs that people have written to monitor Wikipedia and to alert them. So when a person comes in and just makes an edit and they don't have a user account, that automatically sets flags on the log. A thing notices that and will automatically undo it. Okay? So you're not really talking with Wikipedians there. You're really kind of just fighting a bot script, something that is the equivalent of you typed the wrong password in. You came in and you did something really strange. Because you're somebody who wasn't there before, and you went immediately to this article, and you made this amount of change, it is assumed you are a vandal, you get a red flag, somebody notices it, and they undo you. So you really can't judge the success or failure of Wikipedia's editing by that. You can, you can judge the success that somebody had to write a client to interact with this information space and be able to undo it that quickly. In Wikipedia, um, when you, there's, a, there's basically a form of information vandal. They're called vandals who uh, come in and undo something. That's an interesting problem, too, because there's a... The term vandalism is extremely wide used in, in, in Wikipedia, as are most terms. There is an entire Wikipedian language. Uh, set that aside for the moment. In surgery stations, there is a problem where there are antibiotics used to work with patients. Because of that, over time, a sterile room that has constant antibiotics will develop super viruses, strains that are much more powerful than the antibiotics because they're in this constant environment of onslaught until when you get hit with one of those super viruses, should this happen, you are at a great disadvantage because antibiotics don't work. This thing has been through a lot more problems than you can imagine. Wikipedia is un unintentionally causing these to happen in the form of vandals. See, it's one thing when you get in on the door and you're just somebody with a can of spray paint. You run into the front of the city hall and you spray, fuck you, and somebody sees that they arrest you and it goes away. Hooray, society works. Civil civility is wonderful. In Wikipedia, because of the fact that it is a system, it is a system of politics, a system of gaming, a system of people being aware of rules, being able to interpret those rules any way they want to and then interact with others and then use their internal language, uh, the term they use inside is called wiki lawyering. And the reason it's called that is because you end up taking these very, very thin credos that Wikipedia has put forward in the absence of anything else, and then being able to interpret them to your own whims. Uh, because of that, there are people, and I will say that quite, uh, it, this, this stuff is not entirely known, but okay, there are groups of people now working to destroy Wikipedia. They're doing so by uh, slowly building up uh, karma and knowledge and ability in the Wikipedia system. Wikipedia has about 900 uh, administrators, a good portion of them, more than they would like to admit, are people who are working from within to understand it, take it over, destroy it. The Wikipedia system enables this. Now, why does it enable it? 
Jimbo Wales is an objectivist, uh, Randian objectivist. This means that in his particular interpretation of that philosophical thought, uh, he does not like to interfere. He likes to give general ideas. He likes to trust in people. And he likes that the truth, that the truth represents an honest, objective entity that cannot be questioned. A is A. That is to say, if somebody, if this is blue, no amount of your stupid liberal whining is going to make it not blue. That's the theory behind that aspect of Randian objectivism. What he did with Wikipedia was put forward a number of very simple credos. Wikipedia will have a neutral point of view. Wikipedia will always cite its sources. Wikipedia will never be an original source of information. Um, and then said, go with it. This worked for a very long time by some standards. It worked for at least a year and a half that Wikipedia in its early days uh, was able to handle this. It had a certain amount of editors. It had a certain amount of people working on it. And they could all kind of agree. And when they didn't agree, they could work out ways. Now, the problem with these credos is they don't hold up. For instance, neutral point of view. The idea behind a neutral point of view in Wikipedia is that Wikipedia will not take sides. So if you have, for instance, uh, the Hindenburg disaster, there is an entire school of thought, and they are not compatible. Two schools of thought. One school of thought says it's the inside and the outside schools. The inside school says that the gas inside the Hindenburg ignited and the Hindenburg blew up. The outside school says that the covering on the outside of the Hindenburg was of a design that wasn't very good and was in fact flammable, and that's why the Hindenburg went up. They are not compatible. There will never be a situation where they go, I could see that. The entire thing was a huge bomb. But <laughs> Wikipedia, because of its neutral point of view, ideally has to present both of these views. Two conflicting, completely not compatible views that have to share the same essay space with no separation between them except for a vague section header. Oh, and the people who don't believe in the other one get to edit in the same space as the people who, you can imagine what happens. Conflict, constant unending conflict. Now the Hindenburg disaster, perhaps you can say, okay, these are all fat old white guys and that's gonna be no big problem. But if you end up with one where the actual existence of a country, say Tibet, is under scrutiny, where one says this doesn't exist and the other one says it does, you can imagine how well and how willing these groups are, are to work together to come up with the neutral point of view. Neutral point of view is also, because of Jimbo's lack of direct influence, uh, something that's used to say, if you put something in Wikipedia that espouses too direct a view, even if it's in the same area as other opposing points of view, that is not neutral enough. In other words, you have cases where people post something that's a fact, and someone goes, that's not a neutral point of view. And the answer is, okay. And this is the thing. The number one question that I get, and the number one question I think a lot of people get if they do any work on Wikipedia is, who the fuck are you? And the reason for that is because there's no limitation. There's, um, there used to be about three divisions on Wikipedia. It used to be um, basically editor, developer, Jimbo. Now there's about six. So there's, um, there's uh, unwashed, anonymous person, editor, admin, developer, Danny, Jimbo. <laughs> Hmm? And bureaucrat. And bureaucrat. Um, so these small stratifications have occurred over time. Most of them were based off of the ability and privilege of affecting certain bits of Wikipedia. Within a very short time, Wikipedia needed the ability to protect pages. There were simply some pages that were just untenable. They could not exist without having somebody protect them. Now, protection is against the idea of Wikipedia. It's the, it's the place that anybody can edit, anything you can edit. But realism sets in. However, Jimbo refuses to pull that in. Wikipedia ran into several problems. First of all, it had to start adding users. In the initial phase of Wikipedia, you didn't have users. You just had an IP. Well, that got to be a little bit wacky. So they started to add users. When you add users, you add identity. When you add identity, you start to add politics, because identities have to keep up their own space. This became one of the largest fights within Wikipedia, an amazing fight. Uh, you know, as somebody who has been watching Wikipedia from the outside, you start to really kind of enjoy 
the fights, because they are so deep, so involved. In fact, one of the big fears Wikipedia had, or Jimbo had, in the guise of Wikipedia, was becoming Usenet. This was something that he would say in a lot of 19, uh, 2002 era interviews was, I don't want to become another Usenet. Now, that's not possible because in Usenet, at least, you couldn't edit other people's articles. Now you can. So it's actually, used, it's actually the worst aspect of Usenet. Also, Usenet was distributed. You could have Usenet in different places. Because Wikipedia is in a centralized location, you still have this central control. Wikipedia has three events in the past year and a half that has totally changed the atmosphere of Wikipedia. That is the ninja, the sex offender, and the publisher. The ninja is named Ashita Kim. He's from Florida. He believes very much in uh, his martial arts skills. He's written a book called Secrets of the Ninja, sold by Paladin Press. He didn't like Paladin Press. He tried to sue them to stop publishing his book. They didn't, so he started to threaten them. He had another case where he was done wrong, started to threaten them. You can imagine how much Ashita Kim loved finding an article about him written in Wikipedia, which listed his real name, which listed information about him, and which criticized his martial arts techniques. There's a group, call, there is a group that is basically kind of, they call them, they're, they're against what they call belt factories. That is to say, martial arts places that produce a lot of belts so that you get a lot of different spaces. Basically, they paint themselves as kind of like a uh, consumer's union of uh, dojos. However, they kind of run their own dojo. So there's kind of some question about what they are, right? Well, one thing is for sure, Ashita Kim wants them to die. On more than one occasion, he has written to them to say, you will be killed by ninjas within weeks. <laughs> you can imagine how much Wikipedia delighted Ashita Kim when it starts to publish his real name. Ashita Kim knew immediately what to do. Go for the family. The first thing he did was figure out Jimbo's social security number, where he lived, the name of his daughter, where his daughter went to school, who he married, who his, fam uh, who his family members were located at. He then proceeded to put them into Wikipedia. As fast as he could, he put them into the edit summary. So when you edit something, you say what you were doing, put in his social security number. There was no way to remove edit summaries. So even though they could undo the work and they could add this feature, which Jimbo had added for Ashita Kim's attacks, to delete things wholly and totally from the Wikipedia database, he couldn't get rid of the edit summaries. This actually took them a few weeks to figure out how to program it to remove edit summaries. It still causes them a huge amount of problem in the code to remove an edit summary, remove the history, and still maintain the basic aspect because he pissed off Ashita Kim. There's another guy. His name is Brian Peppers. Brian Peppers is an ugly motherfucker. He was in the sex offender database in Ohio, and because of a condition he had with his skull, his eyes bug out. He is just an ugly bastard. To see him, your initial thought is, this must be a doll. Nobody can be walking around like this. He was in some sort of a home, this is what's believed, he was in some sort of a home, and he inappropriately touched a nurse, so they kind of hauled him down. And, and uh, it's not clear whether or not he was finally convicted, but he definitely was entered into the sex offender database. So it is possible to go to this place and view a picture of Brian Peppers. An entry was put into Wikipedia about Brian Peppers. Here's, an, uh, here's Brian Peppers. He was a sex offender. And, and so people started to say, this man is not notable. Not notable is the cancer of Wikipedia. Again, something to keep track of in the future. Because in Wikipedia, there are things that are given to them as rules, but no way to really codify what exactly those rules are. That is to say, there really is no final word except for Jimbo. Jimbo wanted something where the people worked it by themselves. And in doing so, and he has said this on several occasions, he didn't want any politics. What Wikipedia has taught us now is that in a vacuum of politics, politics will be created. There is no vacuum of politics. People who are encountering a space where they cannot lord over others for technicalities and gain power for themselves will then proceed to invoke technicalities, take power from other people. They just do this. This is what human beings do. Hmm? So with the Brian Peppers article, this was entered and people said not notable. Not notable says, if something is not of great import, then it probably doesn't belong in Wikipedia. For instance, the idea being that, say we were to do Wikipedia entries on every street in Ohio with a short description of what stores were on every street in Ohio. 
The theory is Wikipedia could not possibly carry all that and still make sense and so on. This gives the rise to the two schools, inclusionist, deletionist. It is glorious that this has come out now in 2006 instead of 2020. The inclusionist versus deletionist debate is as firm and strong as the abortion debate, gun control debate, or death penalty debate. Inclusionism says Wikipedia, because it is a virtual encyclopedia, is capable of carrying the sum of human knowledge, coincidentally the theme of Wikipedia. Because of the fact that you can sort things and you can work things out, you're able to actually keep the sum of all human knowledge on a place, keep it changed, and use the power of the computer. Fuck yeah! The deletionists take the attitude of Wikipedia is not a junkyard, an area for the cruft of all aspects of humanity that ever existed, turning into an untenable Katamari Damacy-like ball of shit that <laughs> rolls through the internet. We should clean up stuff that is not important, not interesting, and we should just get that shit out of there. Who cares about what the names of, the ev of every character in Serenity is? Who cares? So the idea is delete that. Wikipedia had a function built into it allowing people to reach a consensus to delete articles. They gave this to almost everybody. Ultimately, only an administrator can delete it, but it is possible for any fucker in the place to come up to an article and go, you are not worthy. I present this to the Wikipedia community to be deleted. The Wikipedia people then vote. Does the majority win? No. Many times Wikipedia works off of a consensus policy. Consensus essentially means when the administrator shows up, he makes a decision based on the voices of what people have said. This is how houses are destroyed using eminent domain. You have everybody say this is a bad idea, and then the guy sitting in the seat goes, mm, but man, they're giving us some cash. And that's the end of that house. In Wikipedia, you will have 75 to 45 votes in which the 45 win simply because of the quality or because of the number of neutrals. You have this enormous amount of weight that can be pushed around by an administrator. It is also possible to vote for the adding and deletion of administrators. And, in what I consider to be insane, there is something called the miscellany for delete. And what this means is you can actually reach a consensus on what other people in Wikipedia are allowed to do. All of this shouldn't be surprising in the case that there was a politic vacuum. The fact that people allowed to kind of reach a consensus on everything started saying, well, I can do this. So the notability debate becomes an issue. If I love manga and I think that, you know, manga is just the thing that drives my blood, and then you know that there was once something that had the word neon in it, and it was made in Japan, you don't care about manga. You don't even know what manga is. Anything I write about manga, no matter whether it was the best-selling manga in the world or whether it wasn't the best-selling or whether it was an, a new area in, in manga, you don't care. That is not notable. Unnotable. Or, I just looked this up on, Wiki, uh, up on Google. It got 100 hits. That is not notable. This got 2,000 hits. It's not notable. Who cares about, and these are all actual arguments I've encountered, who cares about this particular country's political structure? Who cares about this particular computer's architecture? Who cares about this range of kings? Just say that they were all in one place. You don't have to give one entry on every king. So what ends up happening is you once again say, who the fuck are you? And the answer is, you're just somebody. You're just some random guy on the street. The most frustrating part about Wikipedia is the fact that when you make a change, Somebody who wants to undo that change is just some guy. Jim, Jimbo holds this up as you know, the, the great aspect of Wikipedia is that everybody gets to get their hands in it and we're all working together. But they don't realize, we kill each other. We kill each other every day over shit, over Nintendo games, over the fact that somebody parked in the wrong space. We do this. We're human beings. Wikipedia holds up the dark mirror of what humanity is to itself. And it's interesting because of the fact that it is an online experience, you're able to see this. And this is why I say it's important. You can learn how people interact in a relatively bloodless way. You know, we don't have a case that people are generally killed by Wikipedia. I don't think too many people use Wikipedia for their medical information yet. But you never know. You never know where that's going to happen next. So with the notability debate, this was applied to Brian Peppers. Who cares? He's just ugly. That's not notable. He's just some sex offender. People are only putting him on here because he's an ugly motherfucker. <laughs>
Well, screw you. Uh, Brian Peppers is seen everywhere. There's a You're the Man Now dog entry about him. He's act- mentioned on Slashdot. He's been linked from everywhere. The, the, the GNA uses him and they're, they're spamming. You know, he's a very important person. So people sit there and argue, right? So they delete it. They put him up for deletion. His article is immediately deleted. The article is created again. It is put up for deletion. This almost never happens. Usually when something is put up, it's automatically. Six times the Brian Peppers article goes in. Each time, the argument becomes more and more inflamed, almost like watching a match falling into a gas tank. You just did not expect this. Literally, dozens of people are jumping in on the Brian Peppers controversy, up to the point that Jimbo himself sets foot into it and says, there's a lot of fighting here. There will be no editing on this for one year. This makes things even worse, because people say, who the fuck are you? Why are you telling us that we can't debate this like human beings? You've just locked us out. Screw you. They start creating Brian Pepper's internet meme, Brian Pepper's sex offender, and so on, to get around this limitation. Some people leave over it. That's what happens a lot. Uh, Wikipedia really wastes energy. That's its kind of little secret, right? You say, wow, this is, you know, it's an amazingly inefficient process. Not just like, like we could really tune the spark plugs and it'll run a little better. I mean, literally just dropping ballast as it goes. Uh, there is actually a uh, entry, Wikipedia has what's called a featured article. When an article achieves a certain level of quality, it is then um, put up as a featured article. There's actually a list on Wikipedia of articles that have been demoted from featured. Literally dozens of articles that once they hit featured status, they start to slowly actually degrade in quality to the point that they lose their featured quality status and just become regular old articles again. I followed an article on the swastika. I chose the swastika because my people who work on it a lot tell me that Wikipedia, one of Wikipedia's biggest ones was the swastika. It has 1,000 edits on it. And I used the point of this one time when somebody put in a link between the swastika and socialism. That is to say, the Nazis in the 40s kind of linked themselves. They were involved with the socialists, so they kind of redid as a branding the swastika as two S's kind of forming. Not to say that they followed all the rules of socialism or to say socialists ran the Nazis or anything else, but this was a branding thing. Guy put it in. He cited a source. Guy comes along. Deletes it. Nonsense. Writes nonsense. Guy, original one, does what everyone else does. Fuck you. Goes back and puts it back. Third guy comes in and says, don't undo the work of others. Now, the battle of July begins. About 100 edits going back and forth trying to like, keep socialism in. And finally, no, it, it's gone. It's wrecked. Now, the socialism thing. The guy who wrote that was a software guy, a software developer in Texas. The guy who was undoing him, guy in Seattle. The third guy who said, you can't fight like this, guy in, uh, guy in Sweden. All of them, none of them actually, all of them computer guys, none of them history experts, just a bunch of guys arguing over it with no direct knowledge. This happens constantly. There is not only a dislike of experts, there is a hatred of experts. Experts are derided on Wikipedia because they don't tend to follow the rules. They tend to put down cited sources and then say, well, I don't really care about your view of notability. I just proved it done. And when you say, well, screw you, and they undo it, and they realize that they can't follow the rules, they leave. So you end up with a certain level of quality that's maintained, especially in certain kinds of articles where undisputed facts, basically any case where you can prove something without a shadow of a doubt in a way that it actually happened gets through on Wikipedia, but a lot of other filtering does not. Um, As we look at Wikipedia from the inside, towards these mechanisms that exist, that to me is the most fascinating aspect. Because again, because of Jimbo's not wanting to directly control rules, except for, like I said, where he sets foot in, you end up with a mess like Segenthaler. Segenthaler is the third one, the publisher. He's the one that everyone knows. Uh, Segenthaler was a man who was a newspaper reporter, a newspaper publisher, worked with Robert Kennedy, uh, had a long and distinguished career. Somebody put in an entry saying that he was suspected of shooting John F. Kennedy. 
It stayed in there for one year. Second dollar found out about it. Second dollar, for some reason, was pissed. Second dollar did not do what Wikipedians had done from time immemorial. He did not go on to Wikipedia and start editing and join the big ball of fun. He went and published an article in USA Today. He took it out of town and talked about this. This broke Wikipedia. This broke Wikipedia deep, hard, and fast. Because while you may look at Wikipedia from the outside as being this way, it is inside an organization. This broke Wikipedia. Uh, friends of mine, uh, have gained access to Wikipedia's internal help queue. They have an entire ticketing declaration for John Segenthaler to handle any John Segenthaler related issues. See, because one of the things Jimbo didn't really expect was the oncoming massive tidal wave of legality, legal threats, and attacks. There is now an entry in Wikipedia. Wikipedia has a number of declarations, like I said. Wikipedia not, which means Wikipedia is not an encyclopedia. Wikipedia is not this. It's to be considered this kind of an event. Um, uh, uh, you know, basically what happens is, is that as you become an administrator, you start to speak in code. This does two things. Number one, it makes it easier for you to talk to other administrators. And number two, it blocks out newbies because they can't speak the code. So instead, they kind of stay over in the back. So for instance, there's WP Beans. Somebody says WP beans, it means don't stick beans in your nose. What that means is don't tell people about stupid stuff that people could be doing in Wikipedia because that just gives ideas and doesn't forward the argument. So someone will say, hey, WP beans. Well, if you're a newbie, thanks. Um, there is now an entry called WP office. What that is is Wikipedia front office. That means that if you go to an article, Jimbo, and Jimbo has done this on now several dozen occasions that we can track, goes in, deletes something, and just says, Wikipedia office. Which means, I'm not going to tell you why I deleted it. I'm not going to discuss it. You are not to add to it. And nobody else can edit this except for me. This was portrayed with something called 1-800-Flowers. 1-800-Flowers, I've heard, has some problems with not staying up to their word when they sell things. Uh, this was just, you know, there's an actual 800 flowers, but there's another 800 flowers. And basically what these guys did was kind of defraud things, maybe. According to court papers that somebody put up on Wikipedia, this organization came in and threatened Jimbo. Jimbo decided to say, this article seems to lack neutral point of view. I am going to block it, apropos of nothing, outside of process. And we will work with them to come up with a more neutral article. That was seven months ago. It's been blank ever since. That's the full entry about them. You can't find history about them. You can't find any of the edits that were made. One of the big fallacies that people currently have is, well, even if people undo your work, at least you can see it. Not true. People will go to the history of an article that's disputed, and they will find that that history has actually been utterly and completely purged from Wikipedia. The history is gone. This may, still looking into it, this may be a violation of the GFDL that Wikipedia works under, where you're taking somebody's work and you're completely deleting it from view without, after they've submitted it and you've made the change. And that's just easy. That's, that's, easy, that's an easy attack. Uh, the more pressing thing is the fact that uh, you have a situation where there is now an organization working within Wikipedia, a smaller one, the administrators, the actual people, who previously should have made more firm rules, finding themselves instead having to make in-the-dark, non-transparent rules. So basically what you end up with is you end up with a situation where now people are in the dark, they're angry, they don't understand what's going on, Wikipedia has got battles on the inside. Enough that I do know some of the higher point of administrators have been talking about deposing Jimbo. Jimbo doesn't know that. Now he does. <laughs> Jimbo runs an organization called the Wikimedia Foundation. He's on the board. He helps control it. He makes decisions based on it. And sometimes he makes decisions apropos of nobody else. So he has since started a startup. The startup is called Wikia. Wiki has received $4 million in funding. Its purpose is to kind of develop things. So, Wiki so Wikipedia is now kind of allied. It's also sold rights to the Wikipedia, to answers.com. 
so that this work is now available somewhere else for pay, for ads, for money. Um, all these changes are normal, they're understandable, but because Wikipedia presents itself, again, some of human knowledge, some of the work of everyone working together, it gets caught out. If it was Jimbo's big bag of trivia, hey, dude, four million startup. That's pretty good. So, again, like I said, Wikipedia is just a warning. Wikipedia is a shot across our bow. It's a way to see what happens when unfettered information enters onto the internet. Can of soup. When you get a can of soup, you don't tend to know where it came from. Your one bit of knowledge and security is the color and the brand name on the outside of the tin can. Written on a piece of paper, which you trust was put there by a machine, by the company that's claiming it's what it is. And you don't know where the ingredients came from today, tomorrow. They don't, because many times they subcontract. So you don't know where the celery came from. You don't know where the tomato came from. Wikipedia is the same can of soup. People are now pulling from it. While in an ideal world, with no illegitimate babies, there's nobody using Wikipedia as a primary source. The fact is, people are. The fact is, people are using Wikipedia. Wikipedia tends to be, at this point, the first hit for most proper and non-proper nouns. Putting in anything gives you the Wikipedia entry. In fact, if you have a trillion, Trillion has an automatic setting so that any word you have in there that matches on Wikipedia ends up as an underlined word. You click on it and it tells you what the answer is. To somebody who's using instant messaging, they don't know where this entry came from when they click on it. They also tend to be out of date because they index it across the Trillion and so on. So as a result, you, can, you can't say, well, just go in and change it because it's actually using older and older indexes. That's what I mean by the concern I have, the worries I have when I make these big points. Yes, you can look at Wikipedia and go, okay, so what you're saying is somebody didn't get the plot of the search for Spock right. I'm sorry. But on the other hand, you can look at it and say, wow, somebody's going to use this as somebody else's biography. Somebody's going to make a decision about that. And not all of them are going to be like Segenthaler. Not all of them are going to be able to get the attention of the USA today, especially when it becomes old news that, oh, Wikipedia totally slandered you. Sorry. What I think we can learn from Wikipedia is to understand that people will always act this way. When Google decided to do a study of web pages, it's one thing to say, we, th we find that in our sample group, people act this way. Wikip um, Google used a billion pages to come up with their study. A billion pages is an excellent sample. So when they said the average web page has the use of 13 elements, chances are that's pretty right. With Wikipedia, if you say, given this set of behaviors and given this stage that people get things on, people will act this way, that's a pretty good indicator of saying, OK, well, the next time I set up an organization, the next time I make something editable by the public, the next time I make it going on, this is what's going to happen. People are going to go in and try to destroy it. They're going to try to destroy it on the front end. They're going to try to destroy it on the back end. I have people who have been working for two years from the inside of Wikipedia to slowly ruin it. They have been able to change rules. They have been able to make administrators get deleted. They have been able to modify how rules are run in some places. Why? It's fun. People, you know, people will play World of Warcraft for 80 hours a week. There's no difference between that and playing Wikipedia for 80 hours a week. It's even more fun because some of the, none of the characters in Wor World of Warcraft think they're what they are. People in Wikipedia, some of them think, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm contributing to the sum of human knowledge. You can fuck with those people. That's extra bonus time. <laughs> so 80, you know, 80 hours a week on Wikipedia, who cares? That's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. So it's not an, a waste of time to these people. And they're right. If they're able to successfully screw with an article, a lot of people will see it. Um, I buy entirely into the Penny Arcade theory, which was normal person plus anonymity plus large audience equals flaming fuckwad. <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's, that's the mirror that Wikipedia is presenting to us. And I think that we can learn 
quite a bit from it. Uh, when we look at something old, I'll leave it with this thought. When we look at something old, when you walk into an old church, when you walk into a place and you find, say, a handrail, and your hand goes down, your hand goes down and touches the handrail. You do not find the handrail up here. You do not find the handrail down here. This is because at some point, somebody who was a designer, who was an architect, looked at what human beings were and put the handrail where human beings are. So that 100 years from now, 400 years from now, you can still put your hand there. That is an important design aesthetic. Sometimes that is forgotten. Things where they forget that. For instance, when language is written, which is full of hype and horror and whatever else, say in the 19th century, talking about, oh, in the future, airships will do this, and there'll be wondrous wires, and you can get... Those words are forgotten. They weren't designed for human beings. They were designed to sell a product. When Wikipedia started out, Wikipedia was designed for an idea, a theoretical idea, an idea of human knowledge edited by everybody with no idea of how human beings actually are. Over time, Wikipedia is becoming an accurate handrail. It's letting people now put their hand where it is, and it's not the place that I think Jimbo Wales expected it was going to be. All right, that's it. <laughs>Are we, are we out? There's no time? Is there, are we, we have some time. Uh, uh, I'll be ha I'm sure Jason would love you to ask questions. However, there is free pizza that we did purchase for you out there. <laughs> and about 150 cans of pop from the con suite. Is so, it me or the pizza? <laughs> either, way you, either way, we all love Jason. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, dude, my, my thing cut out, so you are my only recording. I trust him. Are there any questions?